Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we just love you today. And we honor you with all of our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. We receive your truth and it's filling our hearts and our minds. And our minds are controlled and renewed in you. Amen. Praise God. Oh, wow. Wow. Today is Friday, you know. And I told you why I love Fridays. Because you have a whole weekend. You have Saturday, you have Sunday to go over these messages. Go over them again and again until you see that the word of God comes out from it to you. Yeah. Until God speaks to you. Listen again and again. I do the same thing. I listen and say, but you're the preacher. Oh, yeah. Because many times I found out, even as I'm sharing these things with you, there are things I say that I've never thought about before. So there are new information coming to me also. And I want to hear it. I want to hear it again. <laughs> and I want to sit down and like, okay, and, and digest it and begin to look for how to apply it in every other area. Yeah, that's what you do. And that's, what you let, that's how you let the word of God stay in your hearts. You know, we're talking about how to guard your heart with all diligence. Guard it with everything. Everything. Your heart. And you know the amazing thing? Information that you allow to get into your heart is what is going to guide you. If you let good information into your heart, then that's what's to guide you. If you hang around people who are failures in life, you know, sometimes you, you are surrounded by Christians who are all complaining. You know, sometimes you are, you are around Christians who, who all uh, have been to five churches. Hmm, all of them are the same, oh, Jerry. See, see that pastor? If I tell you what he did to me, you see that pastor? Hey, that one, hmm, that one is even worse. You, you hang around such people. You better get out of that environment. Is that you saying what the people went through is okay? No, that's not what we're talking about. You see, your heart, your heart. It is your heart Satan is after. Get out of that place. You see, sometimes, and, and listen to me now. Now, apart from the fact that psychologists say this, it's something that if you observe a lot, you would, you would have observed it to be true. You see, many times children grow up to become parents. And then they sort of begin to carry out the patterns of their parents. And, and sometimes they don't realize it. And sometimes they realize it. Some don't realize early. By the time they realize it, they've, they've so formed into it that it's difficult to change them. Except the word of God breaks it. For example, you see a, a child who watched his father beat his mother. And then he may have fought his father. He may, you may hear him say, I one day I challenged my dad because it was too much. And, and, and this same guy, would you ever raise your hand? How? Never. Fine. This same guy now grows up, gets married. And before you know what's happening, he has hit his wife. And then he hits her the second time. And then... The process continues. And you ask him, what happened to you? Some will tell you, I don't know what came over me. Some will tell you, eh, it's her fault. But you see, you are actually doing the same thing your father was doing, or your mother. It happens not just, not just the sons now. It happens to daughters also. You are doing exactly the same thing your mother is doing, or was doing. And some people say, you know, there are teachings that say it is a demon. You know, that demon. It's not a demon. It's not a demon. I'll tell you what happened. When you saw your father maltreating your mother, your heart was being corrupted. Whether you like it or not, you may be against it, but you see, those are informations that are penetrating your heart, and they are going to sit down there. You're not married yet, so you don't need to beat any woman. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
Yes. So, so he, 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 it's just seated there. Until the day you get married. Now, what, what kind of information? In your mind, and this is how the deception comes. What you're being programmed for is how to deal with a woman. Or with a man, vice versa. How to deal with a man. Maybe for a lady, you don't, you, you, you don't raise your hand to me. Now, there are women who beat their husbands. <laughs> I've, I've heard those things now. now. Now, maybe your own is not, but maybe your own is to talk, talk him down. And whatever it is that is bad, you picked it from somewhere. Now, when you were picking it, you didn't know you were picking something. You didn't know your heart was being, being you know, if, if you are under a bus, for example, that maltreats, his employees. He's sowing stuff in your heart. Now, it can be anyway. You, you may be under a bus that, that uh, sexually harasses the female employees. And you know, you know that's what's going on. You, you either get out of that place fast. You may say, Man, I, I can never be like this. Yeah, you may say that I can never be like this, but then you grow up and you see yourself by the time you own your own organization, you find out that you are doing the same thing. You're listening to me right now. You need help. And you will remember. I mean, my boss used to do this thing. I said, I will not do it to book. I'm trapped in it. it. It can even be in ministry. Now, this is the most dangerous part. You are in ministry. Maybe you have a senior pastor and then he's doing something wrong and you see that he's doing something wrong. You, you've seen it. Maybe you may have spoken to him about it and said, oh, it's just the only challenge that I have. Just please be praying for me, be praying for me. Now, you are still there. You know, I said, you know, you may even, look, let's be praying for our pastor. You know, that's the, he's a good man, but that's the only challenge here. Hey, 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 you, you may end up carrying out the same thing in the day God lifts you up to such a position if you're not even already doing it now why now, something else is a transference of spirit now because we want to spiritualize it it but I'll tell you the truth they are things that were being deposited in your hearts and as long as you were seeing and you were hearing, they were being, that's why you must be careful, the kind of thing. Sometimes when you sit down and you listen to people, even as a pastor, as a preacher, you listen to people and you counsel people, you hear a lot of things. And if you don't set your heart right immediately, and what do I mean set your heart right immediately? Not by saying, I will not do this. I will not. So what would you do? See, it's always what you will do that replaces what you will not do. It's not just to say, I will never hit my wife. Never. Me. I will never hit my You have not done anything. Okay, if you'll never hit your wife, what are you going to do? See, now why, why am I saying this? Because you need to deliberately start sowing the right things in your heart. So why does, why does my dad beat my mother? He says, my mom is stubborn. What did my mom do? She wanted to do something this way. He said, no. Okay, so what was he supposed to do? He should have spoken to her. He should have calmly expressed himself to her. And I, I, I always counsel people in such situations. I say, look, if you can, find a family that is opposite of where you're coming from. And, and at least in that aspect that you're trying to deal with, find a family and let them sow. I didn't say you go and sow. Let's not spiritualize this and turn it to a money thing. And, and I don't mean sow with money. Let them sow the right words and the right things in your heart to take out the wrong ones. So you weed out and then you plant. If you don't plant, what you rooted out will come back. So you learn. You learn from people. 
Now, like they will tell you, that not all families are perfect. Listen, you must be looking for something in the first place. You must be looking for. So don't be dead. You're not married now, but you know you came from that background. I will tell you this. Begin to sit down and tell yourself how you're going to deal with your wife. Because those days of challenges will come. A day will come when you will feel that your wife, your wife is raising her shoulder. It will come. I'm telling you the truth. It will surely come. No matter how humble and nice and sweet talking she is, a day will come. You will just feel this my wife is beginning to rise. And that is where it starts from. If you don't know how to deal with it, before you know what's happening, you say, you know what? You're not going out today. You're not going to that place. But, but, but I've planned it out. I've, I've even paid the money. I've they say you're not going. Okay, why, why are you telling me not to go? Am I not your husband? You are not going. That's where it starts from. Now, what's going on? Something is going on in your heart. You don't realize it. And in your mind, you're thinking of how to, to show this woman that you are still her husband. And then she goes, hey, I don't understand who, what you're turning into. <laughs> but I will go when I go and come back. We will settle. I say, go now, let me see. And then she dares you and goes <laughs> because she's put a lot of commitment to it and there was nobody to cancel her. And then she goes, I say, so I told you not to go and you went. Am I still your husband? Eh, but, 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 but I was explaining to you and then, boom! My husband slapped me. What's going on? I'm telling you what's going on. They were, it was always inside there. You never saw the right things in there. You know the Bible says don't walk with an angry man lest you, lest you learn his ways. Don't walk with an angry man. If you walk with an angry man, you will learn his ways. Now, not just an angry man. If you walk with an adulterous man, you will learn his ways. If you walk with a thief, you will learn his ways. If you walk with someone who's stealing... Um, if, if you walk with a pastor, for example, who's stealing money from the, from the church, you know, and I don't know why a pastor should steal money. <laughs> you know, some things you just wonder, I don't get. Why in ministry? Well, there are fake pastors, okay, so, so fine. But, but you should even walk with a fake pastor if you're not fake. So if you're walking with a genuine pastor, why should he steal money? And, and that's where, that's what, maybe that's why you're even there to encourage him to say, sir. I, I don't, you see, because I remember one time, oh, do we have time for this? I remember one time, I, I was listening to a preacher, someone I respect so much. I, I respect him a lot. And then he said something. I've heard him, that was not the first time I was hearing him, but that particular day, I was in a meeting, and then he said, I have never touched uh, my church offering. Or use my church offering for my personal use. Say, I have never done it. Whether it's true or not, that's what he said. Okay. So you know, I was sitting there, I was like, wow, good testimony. Good testimony. Now that's because that's that's a kind, that's how I think also. What well, I mean, what's for God is for God, what's for you is for you. So so that's my reasoning. So hearing that again, like, yes, at least there's a testimony. There. And then the word of the Lord came to me. And he said, Son, that is boasting. And you don't boast that before. The Lord is good. And then the Lord said to me, he said, what if I tell you to use, what if I tell you? I said, I get it. I get it. I said, Lord, I get it. Now, what did I get? Not that as a pastor I can take church money. What I got from that was like, see, there are certain things we don't boast about. We just follow the Lord. I was talking to someone you know, recently, and I, and I was talking, teaching a person about tithing and why tithing is an act of honor, not just giving of money. So I, 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 I told the person this. I said, listen, what do you think? Now, you, you get some money and then you honor God because this is how you tithe. 
the first thing you must do is to honor God with your tithe. That's the, the the moment you receive money. How do you honor God? The first money you ever spend out of that money should be to take out God's tithe. That's why it is honor. If you do it last, it's no more honor. You're just giving money. So, I say, you, now you honor God faithfully with your tithe. And, and maybe you keep it somewhere, like I do. You know, you keep it some, until the Lord commands you what to do with it. So, now you keep it somewhere. And then, for some reason, now I know this is going to cause some trouble, but I will teach you the truth. I said, for some reason now, you've honored God with your tithe, right? And then you keep it waiting for instruction on what you should do with it. And then, you, you for some reason, spend every money you have. And now there is a need that you need to take care of. And the only money that is anywhere that, that is around you is your tithe, God's money. And then you look left, right, center, nothing to do. And then you go before the Lord and say, Lord, I don't need to spend this your money. <laughs> Can I just use it to sort out this thing? And I asked the person, what if on that pressure they even wait for God to say, okay, you just like Lord, sincerely, this is all I have. And then you spend it. I said, do you think God will call you a thief? And the person thought for a while. I said, I don't think so. I said, you see the point? Titan is not about the money. It's about honoring God and acknowledging Him. God is going to be glad to see that my child, that's really my child. He acknowledged me before he spent my money. He is not going to hold it against you because he's not hungry for money. The time is up. I pray for you. That God will fill you with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And that your heart will be fortified against every lie. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll see you on Monday. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.